In this video, we're gonna dockerize a Next.js application and we're gonna deploy that to a VPN. So I just created a very basic example here. We just have this homepage here and then on this hello page, we have some interesting things. So we have a server component. We're gonna have something from a server action a client component and a route handler. So these are all the latest core features in a Next.js application. So let's see if that actually works if we dockerize that and then deploy it to a VPS. So just to quickly show you how that works here in the code. So it's, it's just a very basic Next.js boilerplate. And then on this hello page, we're doing some interesting things, right? So this is a server component. And so we say hello from server component. We're getting something from a server action, right? That's what we're getting here. I'm invoking a server action, that's this server action that's what we're doing here and then hello is a component which is actually a client component and this client component says hello from client component and this one's actually making a call to our route handler on the back end as well by using use effects here just a simple fetch call to slash api slash hello that's what we have here this is just a very simple route handler which says something like hello from route handler not super important to understand how everything works here the point is that we're using the latest features and we just want to see if this works with content containerizing a Next.js application. So I actually did another video on deploying Next.js to a VPS with high velocity, but that was without Docker. And you'll see actually that with Docker turns out to be easier in my opinion. So we're gonna use high velocity for the VPS again as well. They are today's sponsor. So then let's actually Dockerize this. So on Next.js documentation, we do see that self-hosting and then a Docker container is possible. And they do mention Next.js through Docker supports all Next.js features. So let's actually see if that's true. Now, I will assume that you have downloaded Docker desktop so that you can actually run Docker on your computer. Once you downloaded that, you'll see something like this. You don't need to know much about Docker for this video. I will explain everything step by step. And then what we need to do is we need to go to our Next.js configuration here. And then we need to specify that output needs to become standalone. This will actually create a server.js file so that our entire application is served from that one server.js file. Now, if you're using the Next.js image component as well, you may also want to install the Sharp library. Without that, your Next.js image component may not work properly. So this is my Next.js application. Now we're going to Dockerize this. So we create a Docker file. So it's just Docker file without extension. And let me actually just give you an example to see how all of that works. So we need to start off with some base image because what we're going to do ourselves here is we're going to create an image out of our application and we can send that image to everybody and everybody can then run our application regardless of if they're on Windows or Mac or Linux. And we deploy to a VPS, the VPS will be a Linux operating system. But because we are going to create an image out of our application, it should be able to run perfectly fine there because the image will contain everything that is necessary to run the application. So we're going to create an image and we need to specify in a Docker file how that image needs to be created. So our Next.js application will need Node.js. Next.js is actually just a Node.js application. So we're going to start off here with a basic Node image and then the uh, container that will run, right? So a container is an actual instance of the image. In there, there will be a file system and we can specify that we want to put everything that we're going to do now in the app directory on that file system. So we're going to copy our package log and package.json in there. And then we can actually already run npm install. npm will take a look at what you have specified under dependencies here and we'll install that all within the app directory on that file system in that container. So that will install the dependencies but then of course, we also have the rest of our application, like our actual, our server action. So we need to copy all of that over into that file system as well. So I will copy everything from our local file system into that container, which will be running. And a Next.js application by default is running on port 3000. So we need to expose that. And here we can run a command. We're gonna run this in development. And we could actually also create a production build. So here in a package.json, you can see we have our dev server, but you can also build an optimized version of your Next.js application. And then if you want to run that, you need to run npm run start, right? So then you would have another command npm run start. This is just an example. So now I have my Docker file in here and now I'm going to open up my terminal and now we're going to create a so-called image. So I'm going to write Docker build, find the Docker file in the current directory, right? So this will be this file right here so that it knows how to build this into an image. And then I can give it a name or a tag, just dash example, let's say. I'm going to press enter here. Let's see 
what we get. All right, so it's gonna build that, it may take a couple of seconds. The, the first build typically takes a bit longer. If you change something, it should be much faster the second time you build it. You can see it runs npm install now, so it's installing all of those dependencies that are defined in package JSON. All right, so after some time, actually it takes quite some time, it is finished, and now you can go to that Docker desktop application. And now under images, you should see one entry here. That's the one that we just built. So an image in Docker is just like a blueprint of how an application, but it also includes everything that is necessary to run it. So that means that now I should be able to run this. And so we should be able to still use that application, but now through Docker. Right, so now I'm going to shut down my Node.js development server here. I'm going to shut it down. And now uh, let me close this. Now, if I go back, you can see it doesn't work anymore. Now I want to run this through Docker by running a so-called Docker container, right? So an actual instance of an image is called a container. So I will say Docker run, and then I need to specify the port. So we want to access this on our computer at localhost 3000, and we need to map that to where the actual application is running within that container. So that's actually also port 3000. And then the name, well, it's called just example, just dash example. All right, let's see what we get if I do this. All right, so now you can see, we see our traditional Next.js output here in the terminal. It says ready, so let's actually check that out. So now if I refresh here, let's see what happens. And now you can see I have this hello round. You can see it's actually getting some response from the route handler as well as the server action. And so these two pages are still working just like before, but now it's running in a Docker container. So now we can pass around this image here to other people or to a VPS server, as we'll see. And then in those places, you can also run this and you will get a container. And by the way, you can see your containers here, your actual instances here. So what you can do is in here, you can go here, you can go to files, this is the file system in that container. And so we copied everything here into an app directory. So here's where you will see all of your Next.js files. Now this was just a simple example. And if we go back to the Next.js docs, they will actually give you a more complete example as well. So here in the official example, they have a Docker file here as well, as well as a Docker ignore file, which is very similar to git ignore. Because remember with the Docker file, we were copying over some files. And right, so here it's copying things from the local file system into what will be the container. We don't want to do that with node modules and things like that. So let's actually remove our example here. You first need to stop the container at right? this running instance. We're going to stop this and actually remove it. And then we can actually delete that image. So I'm going to delete the image as well. All right, so now we have a clean slide and I'm actually just going to copy whatever is everything from this Docker file. And I'm going to put that in the Docker file that we created here. And so this was just a simple example. This is a more sophisticated setup and you can go through it, but I want to move on here. I also want to add this dot Docker ignore file. I'm going to copy the contents here and I will quickly create that file here as well. Dot Docker ignore. I'm just going to save here. And now we have the correct files. So now we have this. Now we need to build an image out of this again. So I'm going to open up my terminal once more. I can actually move up to see what we had before. So we say Docker build, look at the Docker file in the current directory. And I'll give it a tag name of another dash example. I'm going to press enter here and it will build an image out of this. All right. So after some time that is finished again. Now, if I go back here, you can see we have an image here again. You can see it's pretty big because it includes everything that is necessary to run the application. Right? So all the dependencies and Node.js environment, it's all in there. So now we can just distribute this image to wherever we want to run this. So in this case, I want to distribute this to my VPS. Right? So the people at High Velocity were kind enough to give me a VPS here. Once you buy a VPS, you will see it in a dashboard like this. I have a dedicated server here as well, but this is my VPS. It's on a server somewhere in Los Angeles. Let me actually click on this. And here I have more information about it. I want to distribute this Docker image to this VPS so that VPS can then run an instance of that image so that we can actually use that application live on the internet. Right? So I have an IP here. So what I would like to do is simply go to that IP, of course, probably configure DNS. So we have a nice domain name, but I should be able to go to this IP address and I should see my application running there. And right now nothing is here. Now to distribute a Docker image, you need to push it to a container registry. So Docker actually has Docker Hub, which is a popular container registry. And GitHub actually also has a container registry. So if you go to GitHub and then under your profile, you will actually see this packages tab. 
This is actually also for when you publish an NPM package. But here I can also push Docker images. You can see I already did this in testing. You can see I already have some because I did some testing before recording the video. So I'm gonna push this Docker image to this GitHub container registry. And then from our VPS, I'm gonna SSH into my VPS as you'll see. We're gonna pull it from that registry. And so then we can start running that application on the VPS. All right, now to do this, we do need a so-called access token to push this to the container registry on GitHub. So you can go to settings here, and then here on the left side, all the way on the bottom, you'll see developer settings. So this is like a password so that we can actually do certain things programmatically in our GitHub account. This is also necessary for some other things. So you can see I already generated one. I'm just gonna delete this. I'm gonna use a classic token here. We're gonna generate a new one. I will do classic here. And this is a note. I will say YouTube tutorial. Now expiration, I'm gonna make it seven days actually. I'm actually gonna delete it after recording. So here I can determine what level of access should be coupled with with this access token. So that registry is, is what they call packages here on GitHub. So we wanna be able to push as well as read from packages and actually also delete. So these are the scopes that we need. And then all the way at the bottom, we should be able to generate a token. All right, so then here I have my token. Don't show this to anybody else. I will delete this. So you can copy this and store it somewhere safe. I'm gonna delete this after recording. So now we have our image here, right? Now we should be able to push that to GitHub the container registry on GitHub. And then we can log into our VPS and grab it from that container registry. Now there's one problem with this image that we built now, which is that, I, that I'm that i actually on Mac. So my processor chip on Mac is, is an ARM ARM64 chip. And my VPS is actually using Linux AMD64. So that's actually the same for Linux as Windows. Now, if you're on Mac like me, when you build an image like this, it may not work out of the box on a Linux or Windows operating system. So I will actually re build this image so that it will actually also work on AMD 64. So I will actually delete this image and then I will go back here. It's a very simple change. So I will run that one command again with one addition here, which is I will say dash dash platform. And then it's going to be specifically for Linux forward slash AMD 64, right? So I wish I could make it a little bit wider here. Let me actually let me actually zoom out a little bit so you can see this in full, right? So this is the command I'm gonna run and let's see what happens if I do that. All right, so after some time that is finished, if I go back to Docker desktop, I can see there is an image here again, and this should work on a Linux system. So this image is still on my local computer. Now I need to push it to that GitHub container registry and then my VPS can grab it from there. So let me actually clear this here. So we can say Docker log in to a container registry. So we need to specify which one. So on GitHub, it's actually called ghcr.io. You may have actually seen this URL, it's quite common. So we can log in here. It will ask you for your username. So my username on GitHub is just ByteGrad. And then the password is actually your access token. Paste there, you won't see it here. The terminal won't show that here, but I did paste the access token. Now if I press enter, let's actually see. I can see login succeeded. Now I can say Docker push. And now I need to use the name that I gave. I actually call it another example. Let's see if that works. Another dash example. And unfortunately that does not work because the name or the tag of this image needs to be in a particular form. Format. So I'm going to delete this image. We'll, we'll have to rebuild it one more time. So I can go up with my up arrow key, get that build command. So here it is. So here I need to give it a different name or tag. So I'm going to call it container registry.io forward slash my name, my username on GitHub. And then I can give it some more casual name like another example, right? That's how we called it previously. And typically you also want to add a, tag, a version tag here. So colon latest, right? So then let's do this one more time. I'm going to press enter and it should be pretty fast. Yeah, so after two seconds or so, it was already built. Now you can see we have another image here. This is now what I want to push to that GitHub container registry. So here I have Docker push. Now I do need to use that other name now, the following. So this is now the image I'm going to push to the registry. Let's see what happens. All right, so that looks good. And by the way, you may see some other names here because I was testing this and Docker is doing some caching behind the scenes but now it should have worked so if I go to my profile here and I go to packages we now see that I have four and indeed I have another example right here right so here we now have pushed this to so now from other places on the internet we can grab this right so my VPS has 
been assigned this IP address on the internet. Right now, if I go there, there's nothing here. So now let's actually make sure that our VPS can take this Docker image and then run an instance of that. So I'm gonna SSH into my VPS. I opened up my terminal here on my Mac. And here in the dashboard, you will see your login details. This is only available for a short amount of time. So make sure you copy this after you purchase a VPS. So I'm gonna SSH into my VPS. It will prompt me for my password, which I'm gonna paste right here. It won't show that actually here in the terminal, but I did paste there, so this should work. All right, so now I'm logged in to my VPS. And so here, if I type LS, it will actually show me what's on my VPS. Now I actually used this for the previous tutorial as well. So that's why I have some other things here. So let's see if Docker is actually installed here. We can see that there is nothing with Docker here. Actually, we can run this command as well to see if that's true, right? Docker, it's not active. So let's actually install Docker first. We'll say apt-get install docker.io, which is like a standard package. Now you may run into an issue and actually what we may want to do is just update everything on the VPS first. So when we do this and now we check if Docker, all right, so I just cleared the terminal with clear. Now we need to check if Docker is actually successful installed here so we can actually do system ctl is active docker and here it says it's active for me so now it's successfully installed now if you see something like failed you may want to run system ctl start docker okay but now at least for me it is installed successfully now what you can do with docker is you can take an image you can run it so you can get a container an actual running instance so to quickly test how that would work is there is a there is an image called hello world that's not installed on the vps but by default docker will actually check the container registries for an image called hello world World. So let's actually see what we get if we do this. This is like a standard image to test this with. So you can see unable to find it locally. So of course we don't have that on the VPN. So it will automatically pull that from a, a registry. So now you can see here it says hello from Docker. This message shows you that your installation appears to be working correctly. And so this is just a quick way to check if the Docker is running successfully. So now you can also see that here by the way. So if I run Docker images, you can see that we indeed pulled one from a GitHub container registry somewhere else. But this, this is now on my VPS. Now we of course wanna have our own application. It's called another example. So let me clear this one more time. So the command that we wanna run actually is the following. So we do need to specify the port as well. So we say again, 3000 colon 3000, and then it needs to be that full name. So it's gonna be the GitHub container registry with your username and then the more casual name and then the version tag. So this is the command I'm gonna run here on my VPS. Let's see what happens if we do this. So it's not gonna find it locally because it's not on a VPS yet. All right, now here we get an authentication issue because we're not logged in for that GitHub container registry, right? So it's a private package actually. So we need to log in first. So we say Docker, Docker login, and then which registry is ghcr.io. Okay, I'm gonna write ByteGrad as my username, and then it's that access token. All right, so I just pasted that here. Let's see what we get. All right, so now we have login succeeded. Now I'm gonna clear this one more time, and then I'm gonna push up arrow key here to get that run command again. So this is what we wanna run now after logging in. Now we should have access, so let's see what we get. You can see it's pulling from that registry and after some time you can see here in our vps now we see this next.js output and it says that the next.js app is running on localhost 3000 but that's on the vps now we have mapped that to port 3000 on the vps as well so now if you go here this won't work right so this still won't show anything because it's going to be on port 3000 if it works so let's check that out now and now you can see i have a next.js website running on a VPS. This is the homepage, but let's actually see if all of those Next.js features are still working now that we have Dockerized it and deployed it to a VPS. So let's check out Rousing here to hello. All right, so now we have this and you can see everything is still working. We have the server component is working. We do get a result from a server action. Client component is working and we also got a response back from that route handler. So all of the latest Next.js features are still working. So we can Dockerize the latest Next.js app router we can distribute it to a container registry and then you can distribute it to whoever and wherever you want so in this case we distributed it to a vps by high velocity and as you could see it actually wasn't even that difficult it's actually easier to do it with docker than without if you checked out the other video now of course we can make it much more sophisticated right so in high velocity here we can configure ssl right so then we don't have this not secure warning of course we can configure dns so you get a nice clean domain name so people don't have to type the IP address 
and the board. And what you can also do actually is you can create a repo on GitHub for your project here and you can use GitHub Actions so that whenever you push a new update to the repo on GitHub, it will create a new Docker image out of that. And so you can get much fancier than what we've done here. But now at least I hope that you have a good high level overview of how the whole process works. So I want to thank High Velocity for sponsoring this video. Check out their VPS hosting for your Next.js website. I've had a great time working with their VPS offering. They have cPanel, they have other features. And then I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see the next one.